Welcome everyone to the this talk about cutting edge technologies in uh, automated testing by Anton Angelo. We are glad they can join us today. Without further delay, over to you, Anton. Hi guys, welcome from Bulgaria. I'm uh, really glad uh, to share my knowledge with you. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, a few tools um, or libraries, whatever uh, word you pick that can help you um, in mobile testing and also actually no matter of the uh, automated testing context, as you will see. First, who am I? Uh, maybe you know me from uh, my blog. You read one of my articles on Automate the Planet. Um, also for a few years now, um, I'm CTO uh, of a company that we're uh, providing training and uh, professional services or you read one of my books about design patterns in c -sharp or Java for automated tests. Since we have only 20 minutes, uh, I will directly uh, start. Um, actually, I deleted one of the slides, but anyway, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is um, um, how we can verify PDFs. This is uh, not only PDFs, but uh, there are certain documents and uh, layouts in our tests that are uh, hard to automate. For example, an invoice like this, or sometimes it's uh, like a preview of uh, a print preview uh, of your browser, right? Or on mobile uh, in any way. Uh, but uh, sometimes there are certain uh, screens and pages that we cannot interact directly with APM, Selenium, whatever. Um, and I was thinking uh, in the past, uh, a way how we handled this is we were using some kind of an image comparison, for example, SQLe, uh, through code or uh, with another IDE. However, uh, we had the problem that, um, you know, uh, the data is changing. And if you, uh, in, in some way, you have different data, it's a little bit hard to automate this with, uh, um, you know, with this image comparison. Of course, there are some tools that can check only parts of the screen and you can uh, change the percentage of similarity and so on. However, um, I wasn't uh, completely okay with it. So uh, I was thinking how we can improve this. And, uh, in recent years, uh, I was working uh, many often with cloud solution in uh, Google Cloud, in Microsoft Cloud, in Amazon Cloud, right? Uh, primary, 50% uh, of my job, I'm using Microsoft Stack. So some of the examples I'm going to give are with C Sharp and uh, in the Azure Microsoft Cloud. However, I will mention the alternatives uh, with uh, Google and Amazon. And also uh, all of their uh, so-called AI cognitive cloud services are actually available in all of the languages and uh, mostly are exposed as uh, web services. So uh, in order to handle this problem with PDFs and similar uh, stuff, what are the similar stuff? Well, for example, um, you may need to verify charts like this. I had uh, this problem a few months ago when uh, we were working for a medical enterprise and we had to extract information for such graphs, right? Uh, which of course, it might be really hard, uh, no matter the device. Um, so uh, I was researching uh, the different cloud platforms and I found this computer vision AI service from Azure. Um, and actually uh, it has many capabilities, but I'm going to talk about only one of them. It's called text extraction, OCR. Maybe you have heard of the term. Basically the thing that this is doing is that it can, you send uh, through this web service, your PDF or the file or the image, whatever. And it's going to return, parse it and return uh, all the text information inside the PDF. Uh, and uh, also this works for uh, not like this or like this, right? And the thing that I did is that uh, basically I created 
uh, like a wrapper to the API. For C Sharp, you need just to install two new Get packages, Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services Vision Computer Vision. And then uh, we just need to provide an endpoint and a key that we create in the Azure Cloud. Um, keep in mind that most of these services are paid no matter the platform. Uh, however, uh, for example, if you, I believe that up to 1000 requests, they're free, then you pay per request, I think, something like this. Um, and I will skip here the code. This is not really important what we are doing inside because most of the things here, uh, uh, you know, I just saw in the documentation how I need to implement them. But I'm going to show you uh, in abstract what my tests are doing, right? So uh, here with this computer vision service, uh, I already initialize it. I provide the path to my PDF or an image. And uh, as you can see here, uh, basically the service when you call it is returning a list of strings. And then uh, here I'm initializing uh, expected uh, text snippets and then we basically validate them. My method validate, the only thing that it's doing here is that it's making a collection, a sort of subsetting the, uh, the two lists, right? Um, however, the problem with this approach is that even if you check, for example, this address here, you're not sure that the layout of the PDF is not broken, right? And you're not sure that this price is exactly here. Uh, and this was a problem for me and I was continue digging uh, how I can improve this. And, um, I found another uh, cognitive service AI from Microsoft. It's uh, it's called Form Recognizer. The Form Recognizer it's it's working in a similar way, but uh, basically since these are web services, they are returning JSON in both formats. And here, this uh, analyzation, the thing that it's doing, is that it's going to return the different boxes. Um, and it's going to return their coordinates, right? Um, and, and the information and the words uh, and so on. And the thing that we can do in our code is that we can um, basically, let me show you, we can further um, analyze uh, the PDF and then we can get these coordinates based on a template Every time in my tests, I'm providing like a, a, like an example PDF or an image, and I'm comparing the different uh, X, Y, and so forth on the different boxes with some kind of a delta. Usually for me, this 0.1 delta is working completely fine. And then when I'm checking the layout and it's fine, then I can uh, I exposed uh, basically the PDF or the image. Uh, as a table and I can get the different rows and columns and I can check the exact text, which is perfect, right? Which is uh, like working directly with a, a HTML table, right? And I further um, um, extend the solution to work on a mobile desktop, etc. Uh, as you know, in uh, APM and in Selenium, you can uh, make a screenshot of a, uh, of a particular element. I had this problem in uh, APM desktop for in a uh, one medical app uh, that because when app driver was too slow to get, uh, you know, working with huge uh, data sets, data tables. Uh, basically, the thing that we did there is to make a screenshot of this table. And then I was using this approach to analyze only this particular image of the uh, of this table of data and then verify it in uh, this fashion. Uh, which was really awesome, right? Um, maybe later I can, uh, in the rooms, in the handouts, uh, if you are curious, I can uh, show you more. Uh, also keep in mind that it's not only Azure, uh, Google Cloud has this Cloud Vision API. I use it also in the past. Uh, Amazon also have their alternative. They are relatively similar in pricing and in features. Uh, so yeah. Uh, now, uh, the second thing that I wanted to show you is, uh, as you know, is uh, our part of uh, our tests are good 
uh, and we write them. But however, as you know, part of our job is to analyze the test failures, and this is almost half of our job. And I believe we should be able to uh, ease this process, right? Uh, and in many projects, we started using this uh, Docker-based open source solution report portal, and I want uh, to show it to you because it's free and open source and it's awesome. Um, you can check it on the report portal IO. I, I already host it in Docker. So here uh, with a single command, all of this will be created for you. Uh, I already set up the... Uh, uh, I already walked in, uh, into uh, their demo website. You can check it. Um, and why this dashboarding is, uh, I really like it. Uh, because it's real time. It's not just a report for a particular pipeline or a job in Jenkins or Azure or whatever continuous integration you use. It's a standalone application with different users, roles, etc. cetera. Um, and again, when you run your tests, it's a dead wipe, uh, no matter how many parallel runs and pipelines you build. It's basically accumulating the data for all of the runs for the whole company. Um, and these dashboards can be configured per team and uh, have permissions, right? So it's really awesome. Uh, also, you can see the launches and then you can uh, directly, the engineers can analyze uh, the test failures here. And uh, since this has integrations with Jira and other uh, similar systems, you can report bugs directly for here and mark certain tests for that it's automation bug, that it's a system issue and so on. And also they have uh, this built-in uh, so-called machine learning, but basically if you analyzed a few times a test with a particular uh, stack trace, it's going to uh, mark the next time it will figure out that this was a problem and it's going to mark the test as an issue, right? Um, which is really great. You, you, you can check it. Uh, the How you can start, basically you go to their website, go to install. You can deploy it locally as me uh, on my Docker. You can deploy it on Kubernetes uh, or uh, on a virtual machine in uh, one of the clouds. Also, uh, in order to get started, they support all kinds of languages. You just need to click here uh, um, you know, on the particular technology, and then you will see a completely uh, example in GitHub, right? In C Sharp, uh, it's quite easy to use it. Uh, you just need, in most languages, actually, you just need a configuration like this, where you provide a personal token project uh, and some metadata. Uh, in C Sharp, we install this new get package report portal. Basically, this is like a plugin for the runner. And then everything starts working. Uh, it's completely the same in Java. For example, you need this report portal properties and you need a few dependencies in the form. That's it. Um, since we have only a few minutes, uh, not so much time, um, I have one more thing to show you. It's called Key Vault. And especially about this um, cloud stuff, like for example, integration with Azure or Source Labs, Lambda test, no matter uh, what it is, uh, you need to store somewhere the endpoints and the subscription keys and the usernames and so forth. As you know, one of the ways to do it is to put it into a configuration, not directly in the code, depending on the environment, because these credentials and URLs can be different, right? Um, so one way is to uh, put it in here. However, this is not the best practice. Usually the suggestion is to uh, put it into environmental variables and that's fine. Uh, when you put it into an environmental variables, we can get it like this. Uh, it's completely similar in Java and other languages. Environment, get environmental variable, right? However, the big problem with this is that, uh, for example, in our framework, when we are working on uh, big enterprise projects, we have, I don't know, maybe 20 environmental variables to handle uh, URLs, passwords, endpoints, subscription keys. And if you're working on many machines, this can be tedious to set up so many environmental variables all the time, right? It's not in a centralized way. You cannot, uh, 
for example, if your key has expired, it's uh, it gets a problem to update it on, on all of the machines, right? So uh, of these cloud uh, platforms now, uh, they offered uh, a solution uh, in the cloud called Key Vault, or in case of Google, this is called uh, Secrets Manager. It's basically a centralized way, a vault, uh, where you keep your all of your uh, secrets there. And uh, the only thing that you need basically is to initialize only two, three environmental variables to set up the key vault. That's it on the machine. And then uh, basically you just ask for the different secrets, but you don't keep them uh, on your machines and environments, uh, which is great uh, because you can, from a centralized point, uh, keep them safe, then you can update them and so forth. Um, and for most of our enterprises, this was actually a requirement. Uh, these big enterprises asked us to, uh, to handle it this way. Uh, but again, it's up to you. For example, here, this um, wrapper that I created, the secrets resolver actually is working with uh, both options. For example, in my configuration, if uh, the value in my configuration starts with environment underscore, then I know that this environmental variable, other way, uh, it checks the vault, right? If uh, if I have it set up. We have three minutes. Uh, maybe we can start with the questions and I can show you many other stuff, but maybe it's time to answer a few questions. And uh, later in the handouts, if you want, we can uh, chat and discuss more, right? That's great, Anton. That was a very informative talk. We do have some questions from the mm -hmm. participants. I'll read them out to you and uh, we can go from there. Uh, we have Stelios asking uh, which library and the library you were showing uh, to uh, leverage OCR in C Sharp. Is that available in other languages? Uh, I, I was showing uh, this um, former, the, the one of them for the layouts. It's called form recognizer. The other one is computer vision. Uh, actually, you can check um, their documentation, Azure. Let me see. But I believe that uh, they have examples in Java and other languages as well. Uh, yeah, they have C Sharp, Go, Java, Node.js, and Python. And I believe it's the same for Google. Awesome. That's great. I hope that answers Telio's question. We have another question about the image recognition bit. Uh, someone anonymous is asking, uh, how does this perform with subtitles, recognizing subtitles from a video screenshot? Is the dynamic background an issue? I haven't checked it. I have, uh, by the way, played a little bit with, um, with captures, right? Uh, with these images that pop up sometimes on Google. It was partially okay. Uh, with subtitles, actually, uh, I was playing a little bit with another service that they have. It's called Video Index Cognitive Service. Um, basically, they have a analyzation, a video analyzation uh, uh, service. I cannot find it right now, but they have a special service for the videos and they can extract any kind of meta information, including, I think, subtitles. But it's a little bit more expensive because they are parsing the whole video. But you can try it with uh, screenshots, right? Uh, I have just used the video service. Great. We have another question, probably the last one, but what we can take in the talk from Zon. Uh, I guess he's asking, is there anything that you can share more about the auto analyzing feature of report portal in other places? Um, I haven't used it much. From what I saw, basically, it's just remembering uh, the different, it's analyzing the exception messages that you get uh, uh, of, the of the felt tests, right? It's remembering into the database, and then uh, it's just looking like in a dictionary or a map. Uh, what's going on, right? Uh, but it's not a real like AI or machine learning, I think. It's just 
a really simple algorithm there. Uh, so most of the time I'm, uh, you know, double checking the results that uh, they are marking. At least this is my observation, of course. Maybe you can ask directly since uh, it's uh, on a GitHub. Uh, yeah, uh, you can ask them directly. Makes sense. All right. So I guess we're almost out of time. Thanks, Anton, for sharing your experience with us today.